Hi guys, welcome to the new Precision Laser and Instrument YouTube series. My name is Anthony Pascuzzi. I handle geospatial training and support as well as 3D scanning solutions. Over this series, I plan on covering topics from Trimble Business Center, RealWorks, and Trimble Access, but we will also cover technology that we at Precision Laser and Instrument service and sell. So make sure to subscribe and click the little bell icon so you'll be notified when we upload a new video. The TVC video series starting with this one is going to be a detailed instructional video covering TVC tool by tool. I know when I first started using TVC, I was quite overwhelmed with all the commands and functions, and that was seven years ago. Since then, they have added so many more features that getting started now could seem impossible. I'm hoping that this series will help tame the beast, so to speak, and help you get the most of your Trimble Business Center license. So we're going to start at the beginning and go over creating a template in TVC, and also show you how to create custom tabs and groups so that you can streamline your processing and workflows. All right, guys, we're now inside of the uh, Trimble Business Center software. Um, in order to generate a, a template, the first thing we're going to have to do is go into New Project. And since I generally use US Survey Feed for my unit of measurement, I'll go ahead and click OK here. Now, there's nothing inside of this project at the moment. Actually, if I open up the Project Explorer, you can see there's nothing imported into here. But this is a time right now where you can drag in a feature code library or a FXL file or a blank CAD file or a DWT in order to bring over all of your CAD layers if you plan on doing any sort of drafting or drawing lines inside of here. Um, you can drag all those things inside of here now. But if you're, since you're generating a template, you do not want to drag in any sort of survey data or anything like that. There's, there's no need to do that, at least right now. So if I come up to my, open up my Project Explorer and come to my project name, right click on it and go to Project Settings, this is going to open up all the settings inside of TVC that I can possibly uh, make adjustments to. Um, you'll notice the ones we're going to look at are going to be our view uh, as well as our uh, default standard errors. Now coordinate system is listed here and uh, I know some people generate templates for coordinate systems. Um, it's not something that I generally do. I uh, use the job file uh, from Trimble Access because it carries over the, the coordinate system along with it. Um, if you are using uh, CSV files instead um, and you have TBC, then I highly encourage you to start using the actual raw job files versus um, the uh, CSV files. And in future videos, we'll kind of, you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. But essentially, uh, when you bring in the raw information, you can make any sort of corrections to that, whereas a CSV file um, you're only getting the coordinate information, you're not getting all the back information that ties into that or how that coordinate was achieved. Um, so if you have TBC, you'll get the most out of it by bringing in the job or a JXL file. Um, so if you're using CSV files, then yet you probably would want to make an adjustment to the coordinate system, but if you're using the raw data, uh, I, I usually don't use this. Uh, under our view tab, uh, these are all the reports that TBC uh, spits out. Um, so any one of these reports that you open up, let's say um, your optical spreadsheet. If I click on my optical spreadsheet, you can see here that there's all these blue things that say show or hide. Um, if I expand this thing out or scroll down, there may be something that I would want to see inside of my report. Like for instance, right here, the method. Um, and the method for the, uh, for the instrument height is, is it bottom of notch or is it true height? Um, I've seen it more than once where somebody measures to the wrong mark and they find out that they, you know, that the instrument or the data collector was set to true height but they measured to bottom of notch or vice versa. Being able to show that method inside of this optical spreadsheet is very helpful, especially if you have some sort of an elevation bus someplace. Um, so any one of these things you can toggle back and forth and these are all of your reports or available options right here. As you start using more and more of these reports, you may want to come back in and adjust your template to turn on particular things, um, but that method is a big one for me that I like to make sure that I have turned on. And under my vector spreadsheet, um, there may be things inside of here that I would want, I would want to see as well. Um, so make take a little bit of time and look through these spreadsheets and see if there's any bit of information here that would work for you. And keep in mind, any one of these reports can be copy and pasted directly into an ex right into an Excel spreadsheet. Um, so take your time to look through here before whenever you generate your template 
and also look at your reports as you're going through. Now, if you do make a mistake and you do not have one set, you have one set to hide, we want to be show, or you have one set to show, you want to say hi, you can make these adjustments in the project that you have open without affecting your tab or template in any way. But if it's something that you consistently are changing, it may be worthwhile to uh, update your template. The next thing is going to be our default standard errors. Now, if we go to our total station, we can see here that our default Censoring error and default height errors are all zero. Um, this is important to make these adjustments here, especially if you're doing any sort of traverse adjustment or any sort of optical adjustment whatsoever, uh, to give it to, to give it some form of an error of, of how you get set up. Um, especially comes into play whenever you start doing the traverse adjustments. So I think that a standard error for all of these would be 100th. I think that I think we can all agree that that seems to be a good place to uh, start with our errors here. Now, our horizontal and vertical angle uh, errors. You know, this all comes down to what kind of instrument do you are you using? Are you using a three-second instrument? Are you using a five-second instrument or a one-second instrument? These are adjustments that you need to make. All right. Same with our GNSS um, instrument setting error and error and height of antenna. You know, this more or less comes up for our base stations. So once again, you know, we might have, might set this thing up to give it some form of an error, especially if we're doing any sort of GPS or optical processing. This is important to, to get set up properly. Okay? So these are our default standard errors. These are adjustments that we can make within our computation. And this is probably what we would want to do first right off the get-go in order to make sure the TBC is set up properly for every single project that we bring into this. And we'll click OK. So that made all the adjustments that we needed. Now that we have all the adjustments made within our template, we're going to go ahead and save it. So under File, we have Save and Save As. But since this is a template, we're going to say Save As Template. So what we can call this is our demo template. But put inside of here something that uh, makes sense uh, to the template that you've generated. Now we have the checkbox here to save as a project uh, default template, which we can do that. Um, in this case, I'm just going to hit save. And now you can see up here we have this demo template file. So now if I go to my start page, my demo template's listed here, and I can say new project. And demo template is currently listed here as a template that I can use in order to start a project. And that will have all the settings and everything that I created for that uh, in that particular template already saved and ready to go on the next project that I'm going to start importing my raw data with. So that's the basics of uh, template creation and the uses of them. The next thing I'd like to go over as well is something that I think is a pretty neat feature. Um, I haven't seen a whole lot of people do it. I try to cover it in all my trainings um, so people have it as an option. So one of the things you can see up here at the top, TBC is is a uh, tabular program, which means there's no command line or anything like that. You have to go between these different tabs in order to find different tools. Um, you may not use all of these tabs, and there may be elements where you have to go from one tab over to a different one in order to go through your workflow, um, which can be kind of a pain in moving your mouse around an awful lot. So if you would like, up here this little double arrow here, um, we can drop this thing down and go to where it says more commands. Now under more commands we have the option here to customize the ribbon. So you can see all the tabs here that are listed and you can see there's a pencil to edit, an eyeball to hide, or an X to delete or remove. I do not recommend at all uh, removing or deleting any of these pre-existing tabs um, just because they're, they're actually set up very well for their particular workflows but you can hide them. Um, you know, hide them or unhide them and they'll disappear from this list. If you would like as well, you can actually see up here there's a button here that says create a new tab. So if I click on new tab, a tab, a, a, a new tab will come up here and I can click over here and edit and give that tab a name. So give, just give it a name and then down below here we have a different group. So I can click on this group and I can call it, you know, whatever I want. Kogo, for instance. And say OK. Now over here is the list of all the commands. Now you can go through here, all the commands are listed in alphabetical order. 
or if there's tools and you know roughly where they are in the tabs, you can drop this thing down and we can go to our main tabs and go underneath each one of these independent fields and expand them out and choose to add those things to a particular tab. So if you're averaging points a lot or merging points, you can add them over into your, your tabs. So there's our custom group for Kogo. We can create a new, a new group here as well. Um, and we can call this one our CAD. Bring this thing back, we open, open up our CAD tab and we can go to, let's say we create a lot of points so we can add, we can add create point into our CAD group. Um, we can go to our lines. There's create polyline, create line string, so on and so forth. So from there, you can see I have my demo tab and I have a couple tabs and some groups created and some tools added in there. I can click OK. And when I click OK, you can see this demo tab created right up next to my home tab with all those tools inside of it that I was using. So that's just a quick little tutorial to go over creating your own custom tabs and I highly encourage you to do so. It can help you streamline your process working from left to right um, and hiding and removing these tabs that you may not be using. Um, that's it for video one. Like I said, please click that uh, like button and uh, hit the bell notification to make sure that you uh, are, are uh, notified whenever a uh, new video is uploaded. I'm hoping to do one of these things a week and alternating in between our three main Trimble softwares. Um, Trimble Business Center, RealWorks, and uh, Access, and uh, trying to get the most out of those particular softwares. There will also be some field videos as well going over collecting some information, how to best use some of the, uh, the equipment that Precision Laser has to offer. Um, any questions or uh, comments, please leave them below, and I'll try to respond to them the best that I can. And uh, thank you for watching, and have a good week.